Thank you. Are you ready? Action. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to folks from the Black Caucus, um, especially this late hour. And the first question that we have for you is why are you running for Auditor General? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to the Black Caucus. Um, I'm running for Auditor General to use my skills to serve the people of Pennsylvania and taxpayers here in Pennsylvania to make sure that we're delivering um, for our citizens. Uh, my journey into public service came in 2011 when the Jerry Sandusky child abuse scandal broke. Um, so the feeling that many people had in November of 2016 when Trump got elected was actually a feeling that I had in November of 2011. And so I started to try to figure out how I could use my skills in public service. Um, and that led to a run um, for Congress in 2016 in what was once the Lancaster, Chester, and Berks County seat. Um, and after that, my district got redistricted and was still searching for a way to be of service. And thanks to my background um, in finance and in managing federally funded programs, I thought that the Auditor General's office was a good fit for me because I've been subjected to audits, I've been on the other side of the auditing process, and I've managed um, projects and programs and offices and staff similar size to the Auditor General's office. So really have held those leadership positions before and have run for office before and it seemed like a good fit. So um, this is how I think I can contribute to making sure that um, we serve people in Pennsylvania, but also in this important election year of 2020 that we turn Pennsylvania blue for the nation. Great, thank you so much. Um, the next question has to do with uh, hiring and with unemployment. Um, the uh, unemployment rate in the African American community in Pennsylvania is pretty high. Underemployment is pretty high. What is your commitment to hiring uh, African Americans, people of color? So I think it's really important that we are making sure that where we see gaps in, um, for example, unemployment, where there's uh, communities that are disproportionately affected, um, such as the black community, that we are um, making sure that we are purposefully hiring folks um, you know, that are qualified for those roles, into those roles, but with an eye um, towards uh, African Americans and a more diverse workforce. We know that diversity benefits all of us and making sure that we have different perspectives at the table um, and that's beneficial to everyone. And in the Auditor General's office we can absolutely do that and make sure that we have that representation and the skill set um, that we need to do the critical work that we do in the Auditor General's office and making sure that we're continuing to serve Pennsylvania taxpayers um, across the board, not just a very a narrow focus, particularly, you know, if, as we know, um, in the workplace, we often look at things from an angle that we come from. Um, so, as a white person, I might look at something from a very particular perspective. Um, and again, it's important that we're employing folks that can look at things from many different angles, and it will just increase the power and the intellect um, of our office and the power of the work that we can do. Great, thank you so much. Um, so. So we talked specifically about African Americans. What is your belief in diversity and inclusion overall? So this is such an important aspect of um, our keys to changing how America works right now. Um, making sure that folks are, again, all folks are included in all conversations. So um, at the very practical level, as we just covered with employment um, in the Auditor General's office, but overall, in Pennsylvania, as we're having discussions, that the discussions that we're having and the table that we're sitting at is inclusive of all folks, particularly African Americans, who are uh, a good portion of our state and particularly our cities. Um, and we want to make sure that those voices are heard because, again, the perspective that's brought to the table is a different one. And it means that we are hearing all voices and the decisions that we make and the way that we analyze problems changes based on who is at that table. And when we don't have those voices, we end up with the current problems that we have. Um, as this community knows much better than I do, there are historical injustices um, in our society that we must come to terms with and come to rectify. And only when we are all seated at the table having those discussions and when we put African Americans in positions of power that they have earned and we make sure that we are intentional about that, are we going to see the changes that we really need to see in our society?
Great. Thank you so much. We're going to shift a little bit on our questioning and talk specifically about auditing. Can you talk a little bit about your experience auditing? Sure. So I have been on the other side of the auditing process. I worked for nonprofits for my whole career, um, which meant that um, as those were mostly federally funded nonprofits, so we received money from the U.S. government, either from the State Department or from USAID. And as a manager um, in my companies, I was responsible for making sure that that money was being used efficiently and effectively. So that was as a manager, every day. I had a budget that I had to keep. Um, my largest budget was $44 million, the same, similar size to the Auditor General's office. I was responsible for making sure that that money was used in accordance with the laws and regulations of the federal government. Now, you might be aware that the federal government's rules and regulations are actually the most stringent ones that we have in the United States, so more stringent than the rules in Pennsylvania, for example. Um, so I was the person being audited by the U.S. government. So not only in my day-to-day -day work did I have to manage that money, make sure that I was doing so appropriately, um, and I think that, particularly as a Pennsylvanian, I was really, you know, sort of on, on, uh, on the stick about that, making sure that I was using that money efficiently and effectively. But the U.S. government would come in and audit us as an organization and me as my programs every year to make sure that we were in fact following those rules. So for example, in 2014, I was sent to South Africa to prepare for three audits, um, two U.S. government audits and one European Union audit to make sure that in fact my company had done all the work that it needed to do to be in, in accordance with the laws and regulations. So that's my technical auditing experience. So um, is there any other specific expertise you'd like to share with the folks who are in the Black Caucus? So I would really like to share two other pieces of expertise because I think this role is made up of the technical expertise that I just mentioned as well as the leadership um, expertise that's required. So Eugene, our current Auditor General, manages a budget of $38 million with many staff and many offices around the state of Pennsylvania. I used to manage a $44 million project with many offices around the world and also a large staff. So it's very analogous to the professional leadership and managerial experience that I've had um, and that I've continued to do in my professional career. Um, and then the last piece, of course, as the caucus knows, is that it's very important to have political experience when running for office. So while we can have the technical skills that are required, unless we can actually get elected to office, only then are we allowed to use those technical skills. And I believe that I have the political experience as well. I ran for Congress in 2016 in a year that was terrible for Democrats, as I'm sure everyone recalls. And in that year, in what was once the Lancaster, Chester, and Berks County seat, I actually reduced the Republican advantage by five points. And we raised $1.25 million in a place where no one thought it was possible because it, if you put up a good candidate, even in a purple to moderately red place, you can actually do quite well. Um, and we proved that by the money that we raised, by the, again, there was a tsunami that went for the Republicans. And we stemmed that tide and we pushed back. And I won over independents and moderate Republicans because I know how to talk to voters and I know how to win over folks in rural and suburban areas. And I would also add that the Black Caucus, I'm sure, is acutely aware of the fact that white suburban women came out and voted for Trump in 2016. And those women, many of them regret their decision and they need to come back to our side. And I grew up as a white suburban woman. Um, I grew up in Manheim Township, which is a suburb of Lancaster City. And I know how to talk to those folks. I spent most of my life in cities, as in my professional life in cities, but, um, so I know how to talk to folks in an urban area, but those folks who we have to win back, those white suburban women, um, I know how to talk to them, and for better or for worse, that's the situation that we're in right now, and we need to make sure we're turning out everybody, rural voters, suburban voters, urban voters, and I believe that I have a message for each of those groups and can speak to them well. Um, is there any other area that you plan to focus in on as it relates to auditing? Um, in terms of subject matters that we'll focus on, we'll be focused on the issues that are most important to Pennsylvanians. I should first start by saying that I think Eugene DePasquale has done a terrific job and I would really like to keep up his work and take it to the next level. But the issues that are most important to Pennsylvanians are education, healthcare, and criminal justice reform. And so those issues, um, as you know, the Auditor General's office spends about a third of its time on education, auditing school districts. Um, you know, we've received uh, 
more than 50 endorsements from folks at every layer of government, from former Governor Rendell all the way down to school board members. And the reason that it was important for me to get endorsements even from school board members is because I need partners in government with whom I can work. So when we go in and audit those folks for like school boards and education funding, um, I need to know that I have people on those school boards who will take my recommendations because I can make audits, I can do audits and I can make recommendations, but unless I actually have folks in government who are willing to take up those recommendations, then none of it matters. Um, so I have those relationships, we'll focus on those issues. Um, in terms of criminal justice reform, we have really a great opportunity there to look at in a what's called a performance audit. So it's sort of like a cost-benefit analysis where we can go in and say, how are we spending this money in the correction system? As I'm sure many people know, you know, the average cost per year per inmate in Pennsylvania is about $42,000 a year. The average sentence is about 10 years. That's $420,000 per inmate sentence. And what we know is that folks are not rehabilitated on the inside. And once they're sent to a halfway house on the outside, they're often not rehabilitated or helped in any way or in a way that many of us would consider helpful and productive. And so folks often reoffend and come back through the system. So personally, I consider that a human rights violation, but it's also a big waste of taxpayer dollars. And so what can we do to audit that system and look at how we can do rehabilitation inside so that we're getting better use of our money, but also so that folks are coming out and being productive members of society and not reoffending, and that we're, as we're going back to employment and jobs and things like that, that folks have those opportunities and can be successful. Do you want to share any final thoughts with the Black Caucus on your candidacy? So I would just say that I am the only candidate in this race who has run in a competitive general election and a competitive general election that had Trump at the top of the ticket. I'm the only person who has run in a purple to moderately red area who knows what it's like to win over independents and moderates, as well as Democrats, and to make sure that we're getting folks excited. I am 42, so I am the youngest candidate on this ballot. I am a person from central Pennsylvania. As many people know, central Pennsylvania is actually the fastest growing democratic demographic in the state, so Lancaster County where I live and Cumberland County. And those two are going to be really important to making sure that we flip Pennsylvania blue um, in this cycle. So in addition to all the votes that we'll have to get out in our urban areas and in the Lehigh Valley and elsewhere, um, we'll be working hard in central Pennsylvania and with me at the top of the ticket, it will be helpful in that regard. I would also just add that um, this caucus is probably already aware, um, but we already have two white men on this ballot. Um, and they're terrific, Joe Torcella and Josh Shapiro. And I really think that it's time for at least some gender diversity on this ticket um, to make sure that we can compete with the Republicans who, at their nominating convention last week, put up two women and an African-American man. And so we need to understand that if we put up another white guy to go with the other two, that we are going to have some serious problems in November. And I'd also remind folks that Eugene only won the seat by a couple percentage points last time, so it's not a done deal for the Democrats. And with the new balloting system that we have, um, with not straight ticket voting, this office won't be seen as one that's like just you know part of the, the straight ticket voting. It's going to actually have to be voted upon. And what we need is a candidate who can motivate people to come out and vote, and I believe I'm that person. So thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very Thank good. you. Thank you. Yeah.